Welcome to this series of Caddy Tea Break tutorials. Tutorials designed to enable you to get the very best out of the Caddy software that you have. Whether it's by showing you a little more about the tools that you use every day, giving you a few insights that you may not previously have had, or introducing you to something totally new, something that you won't have used before. The idea is to make you much more productive by allowing you to incorporate these new tools and aspects of tools within your daily workflow. Today we're going to take a look at Quick Hatch. Now Quick Hatch is an amalgamation of the tools that you already have under the hatching tools within Caddy, but brought together in a form that gives you access to drag and drop technology, such that you can literally drag hatches, swatches of hatches into your drawing and place them very, very quickly, picking and choosing between colour palettes, between hatch palettes uh, and so on. Whether you're editing, whether you're creating them from new, whether you're incorporating islands, all of those facilities are there, including the set hatch and get hatch parameters as well. So we'll take a look at that. Um, first of all, we need to show you how to bring that on board. Uh, we'll also give you a uh, heads up on how you can get access to information on Quick Hatch through help and we'll show you how you can incorporate these tools into your workflow and offer insight into how they might benefit you if you're doing a lot of hatching on a drawing for instance. So first of all we'll call up the Quick Hatch tool. So Quick Hatch is under the Hatch menu so under the Caddy application under Hatching and Quick Hatch is at the top right. So when we call it Quick Hatch, this brings in the command and it's free floating dialog, uh, a dialog that we can leave free floating or we can actually dock as well. So we could offer it up uh, as a, a separate dockable there. We could dock it at the top of the, uh, the object properties or if we just move it up a little further, you'll see the tab comes down at the bottom. So it gives a tabbed dockable dialog there as well. So we can have it between them. Uh, you'll see there's a refresh button there. So if you've got something wide enough to support two columns or three columns, then uh, we can optimise that using the refresh button as well. Let's take a look around the, the dialogue itself. So uh, we have at the top uh, different groups of hatch styles. So we have line styles, we have patterns, fills, gradient fills and then custom hatches and we can again refresh these uh, as well as we go through just doing a quick refresh that will give us access to our, our grid of available patterns and you'll notice that it says under these what the uh, the name of the hatch pattern is and the scale of it too so when we're wanting to set our particular pattern and populate this grid we can do that from the set or the, the get buttons. Now these are simple duplicates of the buttons we already use with the hatch set and the hatch get, so they should be familiar to anybody who's used the, the caddy hatching before. And if we go to the set, we'll just call it the dialog, we can go to the particular type of hatch that we want there, and we'll stick with angle here, we'll put it in at 45 degrees, and we'll go for 75 mil scale. We'll okay that, and we see that that comes through and tells us exactly what we've got with a little pictorial representation of it too. So these are the, the, the hatch swatches that we have and as we go down the list what we find is that we have a maximum of 12 in here although you have the ability to amend this from the, uh, the registry settings uh, if you really do need to have more than the uh, allotted 12 but 12 should give you a good working palette, especially when one considers that one has line styles, patterns, fills and so on. As you come into these these palettes, if they're blank, then it's simply because you haven't populated them. So just go and populate them with the settings that you desire rather than factory settings. Coming down uh, our list, you'll see that there's the uh, the get as well. So if there's a particular hatch that you want to uh, to add to the list, you can do a get on it as well. Uh, you'll notice uh, that at the top, as well as being able to click through between the different styles, if you've got a narrower selection, then you can use the, the arrow keys at the top there as well. Moving down into the, the bottom of our list, you'll see the apply. Now, these are the methods of tracing. 
So we see on our screen at the moment, there's just a little insect picture there, identifying straight from out of the, uh, the Caddy Help in actual fact, a little picture which shows you how the inside trace works. So in other words, picking a point, it will track vertically down till it reaches a line, then track around clockwise that boundary, so the inside trace. And on the right here, we see that it does the same thing, tracking around, but because it's now on the outside, it goes in the other direction. But uh, filling the area as defined by the boundary. So we can choose our hatch method here. So if we go to inside and we pick our particular hatch, the one we've just set here, literally just drag, so dragging onto the drawing, so left click holding down into the, the box and that will just populate that with our hatching. If I want a different style, I can pull that over there and I get a different style. So no having to go to lots of different set and choosing that, it will automatically allow me to, to pick between them. In fact, whilst we're on the subject of the hatch set, another nice little feature that's been added is if you want to see the full grid here, you can just click on the, 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 the main swatch within the hatch parameters and that will load up the, the hatch, the, the full hatch swatch grid for us. So it's a, a nice easy way of, uh, of doing that and that gives us our, our hatching. You'll notice that these are individual hatches, so two separate hatches, so if I wanted to, to pick a hatch and delete it, uh, I'm not actually picking the, the one unified hatch. Whereas, if we just delete that and we go for, say, a pan tile on here, and I just point above the line there, that will create it as one, and you'll see simple delete will remove the whole hatch. Moving on to the inside with islands trace method. So we simply just choose by putting the little radio button inside our selection there. And I'll switch to fills. So we've got our fills here. To reproduce that, we could use either of these to do that. Literally just drag around. If I point in here, that's what it will do. Um, if I wanted to have that as an island, I could simply click inside there, I could click inside there, click inside there. So you see, very, very quick to uh, incorporate those. And if I wanted to hatch over here, we can include that as well. Maybe go for that in there and maybe that in there. So very, very quick way of hatching lots of different styles, patterns and so on. Uh, very, very quickly without lots of messing around between dialog boxes. Moving on to the endpoint method trace, so this could be accessed from auto and endpoints here, but uh, we'll use the endpoint trace from our, our quick hatch here. So endpoints, again pick our hatching, so onto the object, and here we've got individual lines just joined together rather than the polyline. So we're just moving in the direction that we want to go, and we could do the same thing down here. Just press escape there, and you notice that that is one joined piece of hatch. And if we move on now to the, the manual trace. So here, to do a manual trace, we, we tick our little button for manual, and you'll notice that we don't have to have it related to the lines. This can be absolutely anywhere on our, on our drawing. Uh, but if we choose our hatch that we want to employ into the area, we now get an auto snap, so we can snap corner to corner if we want to, right click option end, so that finishes that part of the command. We want to do an island and down here we'll notice that we have uh, an undo last point as well if we want to, uh, but we'll choose for our island uh, two points, right click option end once again, and if I wanted to just trace manually around I can do that as well. And just whilst we're uh, on the subject, so if I pick a, another colour here, so we'll just do a trace, 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 and it says U to undo, so U, enter, and that will take me back to there, so I could come down again, U, enter, and that takes me back to there. So you have a, a nice little undo facility on the, uh, on the hatching as well. And of course, option end finishes off the, uh, the hatch trace there. Then moving to the final insertion method, we have closed object. So polylines, circles. So here we can pick our hatch, 
move over, point at the closed object, point at the closed object, point at the closed object. Very, very quick, very simple, and a great way of uh, hatching, say, site plans for a, a complicated boundary, ignoring all of the, the other clutter that, uh, that happens to be on the drawing. So a great way to, to use uh, hatching and uh, employ polylines too and, and get the best out of them. And then we have the uh, the edit. So with any of these, if you want to change any of the hatches that we've got, we can literally just pick over them. And if we move over, let's see, we've got a few more here. So we can just go to patterns and fills. We can just change those at will. And here we also have the uh, uh, the the override facility where you've got a hatch that is going to be too small to be viewed you can get caddy to uh, automatically update that even setting the parameters for next time or not as the case may be so that will give you uh, something there which you can uh, still go and change with the object properties so there's a pattern scale so if you made that into 20 for instance we can see that we still have full control so we're just using the same tools that we did previously and just before we get into seeing how we can employ the uh, the tools that we've got within Quick Hatch in a more typical situation, let's have a look at the help file. So how how can we get the uh, help? So if you go to help, so that brings up the uh, the help menu, and if we look in there, so if we just type in Quick Hatch, we can list the topics, and then just double click that, and that gives you a full rundown. On the quick hatch tool, so a bit bit of background reading for anyone who thinks it uh, it could well benefit them in in what they do. But here we have our uh, little example. So just going back to our quick hatch, if we get the properties of that hatch there, for instance, so that brings us into there rubble, and then we want to hatch inside or inside with islands. In this case, we literally just bring in the hatch we want to not to hatch that so we can point outside it and there's a there's a hatching we want to do a get on the hatching here that brings that one in and we'll again just do an inside uh, on there we've got other things here so we could go back to the rubble we could do our inside trace there we've got a bit of getting to do on the, the hatching there and you see we have which one do we want? We want that particular one, so we'll accept that one. That brings that into, into our, our dialogues, swatch dialog. And we could just say, okay, we're going to hatch uh, inside there. And if we want it inside the roof as well, so we could just do these areas uh, as well. And if we have an area that doesn't have everything joined up, then we could always use the, the manual hatch. So we could go to manual, and we could use that pan tile again, bring it in there to there. And then option end. And then if we're wanting to take away our little cowl here, then we could select the hatch right click and then we'll add an island we'll do it by an inside trace pick inside there and there's our, our hatching done i would imagine that most people out there using caddy are doing uh, a, a number of hatches at one time will find that it will speed them up enormously certainly the feedback has been fantastic from people that have been using the quick hatch saying how how much quicker it is to actually use and employ hatching within their, their normal drawings. So uh, have a go with it and see how you get on.